Let me take this opportunity to say that, that uh, I appreciate you watching us online or visiting us in service. It's also all, always a privilege. I had somebody to stop by this Wednesday night and say to me that they'd been watching us online and how that the Word of God had touched their hearts and that humbled me. And I pray that I can always preach the truth in love and love and, but also preach with conviction. So I, I appreciate you watching us. Uh, if you feel a desire and ever feel uh, like the Lord's speaking to you to give to our local church ministries, I encourage you to do that. You can do that by going to easytithe.com and finding Prospect Church of God there. And uh, you can do that. And I believe there's a QR code there that you can use there to take you directly into our, our giving website. We appreciate that. We are a small church with a big heart. And trying to do ministry is tough in the day we live. So I would encourage you to do that if at all possible. And um, not asking you to take tithe from your local church. Your tithe belongs to your local church, not ours. Uh, but maybe there's an offering that you would feel like giving to our church. And I would I'd really appreciate that. God bless you. you tonight turn the person near you and say you look about as good as I've seen you all day yeah. amen <laughs> we're all beautiful people aren't we we really are we're king's kids we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Boy, that's something to think about it. Fearfully and wonderfully made. We're all, all just, uh, we're something else. But I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord tonight on this Wednesday night, ready to worship the Lord. And we're going to do something before we leave tonight. I'm so excited. But Brian built that wonderful, wonderful blessing box out there I don't know if you saw that when you was coming in but I want us to gather around that tonight and pray and ask the Lord to bless that so we can bless this community I met with the principal today up here at the school and uh, and by the way he asked me when we when they were going to get some more sausage and biscuits up there so we need to take care of that so we, we enjoyed they the teachers really enjoyed that but uh, he told me that every Friday every Friday and this amazed me that every Friday that in our community and the kids that go to this school they have right at a hundred kids that they have to send the food home with on the weekends that's amazing out of a little small community school that there's a hundred kids that if they eat that weekend it's because the school sends them a bag a bag lunch home with them a hundred children a hundred families do what? Every one of them has that many. Yep. Yeah, just, it's just all the schools do. And so that box will be used for canned goods, non-perishable items, even hygiene items that you might bring and put in there. And just, and, and I'm asking you, and if you don't want to, it's fine. Nobody has to do this. But I believe all of us that would, we could bring a can or two of food a week. We, we could all do that and have you know 40 or 50 cans every week to put out there for people to get that's we can do that Does anybody really believe we can do that we can do that and just bring canned good items uh, uh, you see them on sale we need to find a place that we can can stock it and make sure that we have a area that we can keep it out there and keep as much as we can in that box because I'm believing it's going to be really used and beneficial to this uh, is that to get people to come to our church? No. That's just doing what the Bible said to do. I was hungry and you fed me not. I was thirsty and I was in prison. And whenever, when did we see you like that, Lord? He said, if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so I'm, I'm believing and we're going to pray over that box tonight and here in just a little while and ask the Lord 
I'm going to get the kids to come over and we're going to pray over it and just ask the Lord to help us to uh, and how can I say this don't ever think that you you never get a place in your life that you're not needy I've often said that all of us are just a uh, paycheck away or a couple of paychecks away from needing help ourselves I'm telling you that's the truth and and this and I know the Bible says the righteous shall never be you know uh, he's, he's going to he's going to take care of us but that doesn't mean Christians can't have hard times and we have to trust and uh, uh, and, the, and another scripture just came out of my mind you know how people are blessed from the hand of men shall men give you know, you know the scripture says that? Yes. Men shall give unto your bosom. And so uh, we need to do this. We need to do this. This is part of, I believe, some of the struggles that we've had. I believe this is an opening that God's going to show us that we can touch this community. And yes, I believe it could bring people to our church when they see that, pe that we really love them and care. So I don't want us to leave tonight until we do that. Would you stand with me? Let's pray tonight. And ask the Lord to help us and to touch us and uh, just be with us tonight. Father in heaven, I love you. I thank you for your love and your mercy. I thank you tonight that we're here. Thank you for letting us be right here in your presence tonight. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. To be here to worship you and to praise you and to magnify your name. Lord, I know tonight that you're going to speak to our hearts. That you're going to help me tonight, God. And we're going to leave here, God, knowing I was glad that I went to the house of the Lord. And I pray tonight that you touch everybody in this place. And we'll give you glory, we'll give you honor, and we'll give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ushers, come on tonight. Jimmy, if you want to come on. And uh, Chris, and receive the offering tonight. Go ahead and pray with Jimmy. this old course with us right here. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he He made something beautiful out of my life. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. and strife and he made something beautiful out of my life something beautiful something good all my confusion he understood and strife but he made something beautiful out of my life aren't you glad he made something beautiful of your life amen 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know Yes, I know he holds my future, and life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, he holds my future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Aren't you glad he lives? Amen. Well, I'm glad I do know he lives, aren't you? I'm glad I know he lives. Without a doubt, I know that he lives. And, and um, this world needs to know that he lives, too. They need, they need to know that he lives. And above him there is none other. Above him there is none other. And uh, so uh, quit worrying about everything. If you're worrying, he lives. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. Yes. I was struggling to know what to do tonight, and just something came to my heart this afternoon. But I'm telling you something you better understand you can do, and happened to all of us. Everybody in this place can get discouraged. Yes, they can. Everybody in this place can deal with this powerful thing called discouragement. Amen. And discouragement is what leads people to do all kind of things in their lives. They become discouraged from something. Now, if you have your Bibles or you can look on the screen here, I want you to turn to Psalms 142 and 1. We're going to look at seven verses tonight. Psalms 142 and 1 it said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him, I showed before him my trouble. Amen. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, has anybody's spirit been over, ever been overwhelmed within you? Then thou knewest my path. Hallelujah for that. In the way wherein I walked, have they privately laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and behold and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I felt like that before. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Then verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about. For thou shalt deal bountifully 
with me. Amen. Father in heaven, tonight I need your help. I, you know how much I do need your help. And Lord, I just sense in my spirit, it may not be here tonight, but there's somebody really struggling. There's somebody that's struggling with this thing called discouragement. They've, they're discouraged. Something's took place in their life, and they're discouraged. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me tonight to talk about that, and I will give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. An old legend says the devil was auctioning off his, his tools. Pride, jealousy, laziness, arrogance, hate, and the list could go on. But there was one tool that was sitting off by itself and it had a sign around it that said, Not for sale. I won't sell this one. Someone asked why that particular tool was so important that he would keep it above the others, and the devil replied, With this tool, I can pry into the heart, and once I do, once I do that, then I can do most anything I want to do to that individual. And that is discouragement. Because when you get discouraged, you're so vulnerable. You're hurting. You're, you're really hurting, and... And something's got you down. Don't ever say you don't get that way because I, I do myself. Uh, it's his chief tool. Uh, as a pastor, most of my counseling time uh, is spent with people that's discussing what they need to do because they're discouraged. There's something going on in their life. And all around us are frustrated people who simply don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Their world is collapsing around them. And this world is collapsing around us. Everything they used to depend on is gone. You know, uh, uh, and if we ever lose our hope, we're gone. But that's what the enemy's trying to take away from us, is our hope. Their foundations have been destroyed and they don't know where to turn and perhaps they've even considered ending it all. Uh, you would be surprised. It would, it would kind of probably, how, how can I say this, blow all of our minds if we knew how many people are sitting in this room tonight that that thought sometime in their life hadn't crossed their mind. We'd probably say, oh, ain't nobody here ever thought that. You'd be surprised how many people even sitting in this room tonight, that thought has crossed their mind sometime in their life. Uh, you see, there's, there's never been a suicide where discouragement didn't play part. Amen. They became discouraged. Amen. There's never been a divorce where discouragement didn't play a part. Right. There's never been a time when somebody just got discouraged and walked off. There's never been a minister who failed and left the ministry where discouragement didn't play a part in that somehow. Preachers leave the pulpit every day. Did you know that? I forget the statistics about that, but it's amazing, Patrick, of how many preachers leave the pulpit every day and never return back to the pulpit. Just throw in the towel because they became discouraged. So what is discouragement? How do you even define discouragement? Well, uh, while most know what it feels like, they don't know how to define it. Well, it's when you feel sort of down, or it's when you feel like quitting, or when you feel like there's no need to go on, and you know, it's not an easy word to define. Can I ask you this? Would you know it if you met it on the street? It's sort of a hazy and illusionary. It's, it's like a mist that the fingers of your mind reach out for yet find nothing. But we know this about discouragement. 
Now, you're going to have to listen to me to understand this. This is a little just teaching tonight. It's a state of mind. Discouragement's a state of mind. While it has no form, no shape, or physical characteristics, and while no one here can draw a picture of it, it does affect all of us. Discouragement can only be found in your mind. I'm not sure how it gets there or when it comes, but I do know that it never comes for any good reason when it gets to your mind. When is the last time you heard of somebody becoming so discouraged that they won a battle? (laughs) Or have you ever read where David said, The Lord is my shepherd and I'm discouraged. Or Paul saying, I can do all things because I'm discouraged. You see, the point is, discouragement is a negative. It is a state of mind contrary to Christian living. A word we must never practice and a state of mind that we must always resist. Maybe you've not realized it, but you control the doors of your mind. Does anybody really believe that? You open them and you close them. You welcome some things and you reject others. You feed your mind just like you feed your body. That's why this world's so messed up is what they're feeding their mind. That's why our kids are messed up a lot of times because of what they feed their mind what they see on the internet and what they, what they listen to on the, I don't even know what they have now. It used to be CDs or whatever. Now I guess it's a, wait, earbuds. But they're listening to something that's getting in their mind. They're listening to something in it and they feed that. Some cra- cram their minds with lewdness and Central fantasies and wonder why they're not any more spiritual than they are. I was so proud. Danny was telling me, and, I was, and I'll tell Layla this. I was proud of her that she went over to a friend's house the other day and they started watching a movie. The family started watching a movie. And uh, the, the movie, I don't know what movie, I forget what movie it was, but it started cussing. And Layla got up and said, I can't watch this. And she got up and left the room and went to another room. And, uh, but that's what the enemy wants to do to our kids, flood their mind with stuff like that. And others feed up on the negatives and eat up life's leftovers and, and wonder why they get so discouraged. And I believe Paul gives us an answer for this. He said, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report... If there be any virtue and praise, think on these things. I I looked at this, and it's kind of pretty neat. Scientists say that the human brain is composed of 10 billion billion working parts. Oh, let me stop right there and something I, and I believe it's verified. Have you seen where he's introduced into two people's brains now a chip? A chip in the brain. And the two people that these chips are in their brain for is uh, uh, people who have lost motion of their limbs. And now all they have to do is think about it and their limbs move. It's a thought process. If they can just think about it, Johnny, and move their limbs. I don't know what that says to you, but I believe the Lord's coming. I believe believe the Lord's coming when things like that start happening more. But there's two people that they've put those chips in their brains. You're exactly right. Control. They'll, They'll be able to control people. But they say that there's, there is composed of 10 billion billion working parts. It has the storage space space to accept 10 new facts every second. 
It has been estimated that your mind can store information equal to 100 trillion words. I hadn't reached that of you. Us Southerners, we got a lot of words, but they're not even words. You know what I'm talking about? Did you hear what I just said? And, and here, here's, here's, here's what's amazing. I said all of that to say this. We use but a fraction of that space in our mind. We have little concept of the power of the human mind. That's why you must understand that discouragement is not an entity within itself. But it is something, now we don't like to admit this, it's something we choose and permit because we refuse to resist the shocks and unexpected circumstances of life. We let everything get to us. Am I in the boat by myself? Am I in this by myself? We let everything get to us. We let everything disrupt our day. We let everything disrupt our peace and our joy that the Lord has for our life. My goodness. So we choose it. We, we, we'd rather be uh, resist, you know, we just... We choose to do that. How many know you will never walk into a storage room full of discouragement? You can't pick up a catalog and order some discouragement. Walmart doesn't carry it on their shelves. In a sense, now I want you to get this, it doesn't even exist without you. Now that's powerful. It doesn't even exist without you. You must bring it into existence. You create it with your mind and with your thoughts. I'm talking to me right here. You see, discourage is the opposite of courage. And you can't have both at the same time. So discouragement is indeed a tool of the devils. Anybody believe that? It is not a matter of I'm just discour discouraged. You ask some people what's the matter and you know what they reply? Oh, nothing. I'm just discouraged. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just discouraged. Well, I believe tonight it is more than nothing. Because once it's there... Satan will use it to destroy you and what God could do within you because he's got you discouraged. You see, the goal of the devil in using discouragement is to make you give up. That's exactly what he wants to do. And boy, is he trying to do that in these last days. You talking about wearing the saints of God out? He's doing his best to wear the saints of God out. Sift us as wheat. That's right. He is doing his best. And you may, you may not like me or whatever after that, but he, he's doing that to all of us, everybody in this place. I don't know if I've ever felt more attacks of the enemy in my life as I have in the last few months. Because, you know, I, I want to stop right here and say this. He knows the Lord's about to come. He knows his time short. And he's going to unleash every imp and power of hell against us. He's going to do everything he can to get us discouraged and make us just want to quit. God help me. Somebody say, God help. Don't help my neighbor. God help me. God help me. So the, the goal of the devil is, is, is to use that discouragement to make us give up. And we can recall some biblical giants. And try to think about what they would have missed if they had given up. Amen. Moses in Numbers 11, the people have Egypt on their mind. And Moses feels responsible for all three million of them. It's more than he can bear. And he becomes so discouraged that, listen to him, he says, I'm not able to bear all this people alone because it's too heavy for me. 
And if thou deal thus with me, you know what he says? Kill me. Kill me. Just go ahead and take my life. Kill me, I pray. Out of, the la- ha- out of thy hand, if I found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. How many know tonight it's a good thing that God doesn't always take us seriously? When we're discouraged. Because <laughs> we can say some crazy things when we're discouraged. I'm going to walk out of this relationship and never come back. I'm going to walk out of my home and I'll never return. Because I'm discouraged. I can't take it no more. Has anybody ever said that? I just can't take it no more. And he'll get us to say things like that. Because he's got that discouragement in our minds and in our hearts. You know, it would really been something if God would have said, okay, you got it. I'm glad God hadn't always answered all my prayers. I can tell you that. I can really tell you I'm glad God hadn't always answered all my prayers. Moses would have missed God's pronouncement of their relationship I speak to him face to face. He would have missed the provision of water from the rock and the provision of man and quail from heaven. Giving the blessing to the tribe priest prior to his leaving. Conferring leadership upon Joshua and seeing the promised land from Mount Nebo and having God as his pallbearer. He'd have missed a lot, wouldn't he? Elijah in 1 Kings 19, he requested that he would die. The man wanted to die. Does anybody know why he wanted to die? He had just won this great battle on Mount Carmel, calling down fire from heaven. Such a victory, I'm telling you. But then he killed the prophets and and the word got to Jezebel. And Jezebel said, by this time, was it tomorrow, I think, that I'm going to do the same thing to you that you did to the prophets. And he's just come off of this great victory and he starts running from a woman who is demon-possessed. Who's demon-possessed and he's running from her and he's so afraid for his life even though he just, he just faced all those prophets of Baal. He got discouraged when somebody said, By this time tomorrow, you'll be dead. And Elijah, he runs, sits under a juniper tree, and asks God, Just let me die. Just let me die. It's enough, O Lord. Take away my life. If God had listened to that, look what he would have missed. He would have missed the still, small voice of God. And the discovery of Elisha. And the whirlwind and the chariot of fire. In Job 2 and 9... You can get so discouraged sometime and get, go through such things in life. Uh, some of your friends can even tell you to curse God and die. So, some of your own friends can tell you just give up. Especially people in church. Now I'm telling you, this can really happen in church. And if you ever been through this, you, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going through something and then somebody out in the world say, and, and what's in their hearts is, well, if this God thing was really real, why, why ain't God taking care of you like he needs to? Why are you going to church? What, 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 what's going on here? And so, and uh, this is what happened to Job. Uh, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. He would have missed the birth of more sons and daughters, the increase of cattle and herds, the testimony that his latter end was blessed more than the beginning. Let me ask you tonight, or somebody listening online, 
What about you? What would you give up? One of the main things that I thought that came to my mind as I looked at this tonight, you could miss salvation coming to your family. And your sons and daughters preaching and becoming missionaries to a lost world. If you quit tonight or today, you can miss the doctor hearing, hearing him say, I don't know what happened, but the cancer's not there anymore. So you've told me all that, Pastor Again, Tell me how I can defeat discouragement. How can I get rid of it? First of all, Now listen to me, you don't run from it, you don't run from, but run to it. Now listen, don't isolate yourself. You run to God and His people when you get discouraged. Did you hear what I said? I don't understand people who run from God when they get in trouble. Have you ever seen them? They'll be doing good, be in church, doing good, something happened in their life. Yes. And then they'll leave church and never come back. I've never understood that. What you need to do is run to God, not from God. Hallelujah. Because here's, here's a fact. I, we're just silly people. We think God doesn't already know our problems. What you do is run to God, just pour your heart out to Him and say, Lord, you, you know my thoughts. You know the very intents of my heart. I'm thinking about killing myself. I just soon die and I'm coming to you. Here I am, Lord. You've got to help me. Has anybody ever been there? You just got to Him and I, you just, if you don't help me, God, there ain't nobody to help me. There just ain't nobody to help me. So you don't isolate yourself. You run to God and His people. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. Trouble, You know what that word trouble means? Tight places. Has anybody ever been in a tight place? (laughs) I'm talking about a tight place. I'm not talking about sitting down in Waffle House benches. I hate them things. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I hate Waffle House things. Amen. I got one amen back there. I hate Waffle House things. I don't know about but I have to work my way in them and work my way out of them. Because you get in there, if you've got any size on you at all, it's tight. It's tight. Has anybody ever been in a tight place in your life? You just you didn't, couldn't move. You know, that's what that word... Trouble means there, tight place. He's our very present help in tight places. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for that. Not only that, you run to God in prayer. I wish you'd write this down or remember it. You run to Him in prayer. That may not always change the circumstances, but it'll change you. And strengthen you until the circumstances do change. I need to hear that. Remember this. I wish you could write it down. What life does to us depends upon what life finds in us. Oh, my goodness. So don't do anything drastic. Never make a decision when you're going through a time of despair. And boy, do we make some crazy decisions. Wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You've got to rest on His Word. Remember that when the night is darkest, you can see the stars the brightest. God's Word never shines so bright as when it's the darkest hour of our lives. Oh, my goodness. You ever just needed a word? Come on. Yes. Does anybody know what I'm talking yes. about? You had read it a hundred times. You would read it maybe more than a hundred times. 
but you was going through something and you picked up your Bible and you read it that time and it was like it jumped off the pages and attacked you because it's a rhema word it's an own it's the word when you needed the word it's a right on time word that's why you need to memorize and get scriptures in your mind and heart to bring back to memory in those times the scriptures Psalms 52 and 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. I love Isaiah 43 and 2, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over some of the power of the enemy. No, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Deuteronomy 31 and 6, Be strong and of good courage. Amen. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, it is He that... D- that Doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Then we all love Psalms 23 and 4. I mentioned it Sunday. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So I just wanted to take a few minutes tonight. I've been dealing with it lately. I've let it come on myself. I can't blame it on nobody else. Did you hear what I said? I can't blame my discouragement on anybody else. I let it happen to me. That's strong, isn't it? I let it happen to me. Nobody did it to me. I allowed it to get in my mind. I allowed it to get into my spirit. I allowed the enemy of my soul to flood my mind with things that I shouldn't have to think about and worry about and go to bed. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I allowed that. What we must learn to do is resist the devil. And he will flee. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And I don't mean to be mean and ugly, but I'm afraid sometimes we enjoy a little discouragement. We like pity. We like self-pity. We can get attention with self-pity. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? We were talking the other day, and I, I forget, it was about a situation with a It was a child that that is out of control. He's just out of control. And Sister Gann worked with kids all of her life. She loves them little ones, the two-year-olds and three-year-olds. And this one's young. And she said kids act up just to get attention. Because sometimes they're not getting it from somebody. They're not getting it from a mama or they're not getting it from a daddy. And so they have to do that to get attention. And so sometimes, Johnny, if we're not careful, we might not be getting the attention we want, so we let this stuff, hello, we let this stuff get us some attention. What we need to do is cast all, cast every imagination off yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Get rid of it. Don't let it. Because I'm telling you, folks, discouragement can get us. It can get us to quit church. It can, it, can, it can get us to walk out on our families. It can get us just to walk out. I, I'm telling you, it can, it can get us to just make us want to die. And you better, you better get it off of you. Don't entertain discouragement. Just don't entertain it. Don't let it happen to you. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. He's given you authority in the name of Jesus. 
Let me say that one more time. He's given you authority in the name of Jesus. Yes. I just thought about this and I'll, and I'll hush. But it's amazing to me. And that's why a lot of churches don't have, have testimony services anymore. Because what people do is they get up and talk about what the devil said to them. They tell, they tell everybody how much the devil's been sitting on their shoulder, speaking into their heart, into their life. You don't need to listen to the devil. You don't have to listen to him. The same devil that talks, the Lord can talk a lot louder than any enemy of hell. He can speak into their hearts. So resist the devil. Tell him to shut up. Shut up. I'm not going to listen to you. Amen. That's, I need, all of us need to hear that. Because if we're not careful, all of us do listen to him sometimes. Uh, and I'll end with this little funny story that all of you have heard. If you hadn't, I'm going to still tell you again. I never forget when I come off my honeymoon. And we'd been gone a week. And I got in on that Sunday evening. And the pastor, I was a youth pastor. And the pastor told me he'd just been there six weeks. And he said, said, uh, I'm leaving, and you got to take the church. And I was all upset and just got off my honeymoon, been gone a week. And I got up to start church that night, got in a pulpit, and my wife sitting behind me and uh, sitting in the choir with her sisters. And the first words out of my mouth, I said, I don't know about y'all, but I've been fighting the devil all week. <laughs> I heard a commotion. I heard a commotion behind me, and... And it was her sisters asked, well, what happened? What took place, you know? What, what happened? Let's don't fight the devil all week. Let's defeat him, put him under our feet. It's hard, to, it's hard to him to talk when he's under your foot. Amen. 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 Good stuff tonight, Pastor. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. Don't get discouraged. Don't get, and I, can I tell you that the enemy's been trying to discourage our church. He's been trying to discourage our church through all kind of different avenues. He's, he's been trying to discourage. Let's don't get discouraged. We've got a community to win. We've got children that are lost and dying and going to hell and brothers and sisters and, and sons and daughters and grandchildren and a lost world and a lost community. And, and the Lord's about to come and the rapture's about to take place and we're about to go home. Let's don't get discouraged. There's a field before us that's ripe to harvest. The, 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 it's, just, it's, it's ready. Let's don't get discouraged. Let's bind up together like never before and win this community and this world for Jesus. Stand with me, would you? We need each other, don't we? Did you hear what I said? We need each other. We need each other. Just come on up with me. Just come on up. Amen.